Hey friends, Sonia here today with Ellie and Mac, and today I want to show you this super cute hack on a couple of our patterns. I have a baby boy arriving in just a few weeks, so I am furiously sewing up all of the baby things, uh, hence the inspiration for this hack. I thought it would be really, really fun. Now, I used the top portion of the Good Baby Romper because I wanted this lap tee kind of um, top. I love that you can pull this off down from the shoulders uh, and if you want to I also think it looks really cute to kind of have the contrast there and then we use the sleeper sack for the body and then our main part of the hack is here I'll move that out of the way so you can see it is we added a tie to the bottom so I think that this looks super cute it always looks really cute in baby photos and we actually are going to create the tie shape and then add a facing to the tie so you can kind of see what that looks like and the reason that I added a facing and wanted to kind of do that method is I obviously am using a cotton fabric and I didn't want to see the white side when I tied it uh, which you can run into if you don't have anything on the back side of your fabric. If you're using a fabric that is a solid, for example, um, something like this where it doesn't matter, you don't necessarily have to do the facing. Um, you can just like serge around the edges. A lot of people like to do that. But because I have a really cute little print here and I wanted to make sure that you didn't see any white when it was tied, we are going to draft a facing. So. This is a pretty simple hack. Uh, if you have both of these patterns, if you don't, I will link them in the description box below. And also, you don't necessarily have to have the Good Baby Romper for the tie bottom part of this hack. Um, it's more the sleep sack is what we're using. I just used this for the shoulders. So I'll show you how I combine those two patterns, but this part is not necessary at all. Um, it's just my personal preference. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> So I've already traced out the Good Baby Romper and I'm just doing this on my projector, I find it a little easier. Now I want to make sure that I don't alter that arm side where the armhole is at all and so I'm going to start from that same corner. The reason we don't want to change that is so that our sleeve that goes on the Good Baby Romper still fits. So I am just following that line up from the sleep sack and I'm just going to meet that same corner of the good baby romper. So I'm doing this part in orange so you can kind of see the difference between the two patterns. Now I think that maybe quarter inch or so of ease in difference that we made is not going to be a big deal. Um, so I'm not worried about that. Now we go ahead and follow the rest of the sleeper pattern down to the bottom and trace that bottom line. Then we'll add our little tie at the bottom. So we're looking at the bottom of our pattern piece now and the sleep sock obviously is quite a bit longer than our good baby romper just because it is um, gathered with elastic at the bottom per the pattern. So uh, we are going to go off the bottom of the sleep sock and I am going to make my tie an additional about 10 inches longer than the sleep sack bottom. So we're going to sketch that out from the bottom of our sleep sack and I'm just going to kind of eyeball that shape there of how I want my tie to be. Now keep in mind that this pattern piece is on the fold so you don't want to make it too too thick otherwise you might have a hard time tying it. So just keep that in mind when you are tracing this out. That's why I went ahead and made mine a little bit skinnier and I went in and then I created kind of a water droplet shape at the bottom. The last piece we need to make is a facing for our tie at the bottom. So I just drew a line one inch above where we started our tie and I'm using that as my pattern piece to create that facing. That way when we tie our tie you're not going to see the wrong side of the fabric. This is important especially where like I'm using a cotton fabric with a print on it and I don't want to see white on the other side so that's why we're adding a facing. So this kind of gives you an idea of what that's going to look like, but we are going to sew them right sides together and turn it out. So we'll flip that over, place these right sides together, and I'm going to clip everything really, really well around those curves so it lays nice and flat. Then you're going to repeat this for your back bodice and the back facing, and sew only along the curved edges, not the side seams. 
Next, you can go ahead and assemble the top part according to the Good Baby romper instructions. And when you sew the side seams, this is why we um, wait to do this part is because you're going to sew that in a straight line and then you're going to flip it up. So once those side seams are sewn, you're going to flip those wrong sides together towards the inside. And the reason I did it this way is so that then we can top stitch our facing down and you have a nice clean finish on the inside without uh, worrying about that facing flipping out or anything like that. And you can either clip or pin this, but then we are going to press it and top stitch straight across that raw edge. So how I chose to do this is to use my cover stitch machine. You can absolutely use a sewing machine too. And I am sewing from the right side because I just want the two stitching lines. I want it to look pretty subtle, but what you can do is feel through the fabric and feel where the edge, that raw edge is, and just make sure that that is lined up with your needles. If you have a hard time with this or if you have a thinner fabric where maybe you can't feel that raw edge as well, what you can do is pin it from the wrong side and then use those pins to use a tailor's chalk or a washable marker and mark on the right side of your fabric. Then remove those pins and you'll have a marking line for where you want to stitch. I can feel through the fabric just based on the fact that this is a cotton lycra, so it's a little bit of a thicker fabric, um, so I didn't need to do that. But you can definitely make a line for stitching if you need to. So this is what that looks like on the inside, and I caught the raw edge so everything's nice and clean and secure in there. You don't have to worry about your facing flipping out ever. And then from the right side, we just have basically our top stitching line across the front. And I love this method just because then you don't ever see the white uh, wrong side of the fabric. So that is all you have to do for this hack. It creates a really cute little tie at the bottom. Everything is nice and finished, and that's it. All right, friends, thank you so much for joining me today for this hack. I really love this. I cannot wait to put baby in this cute little sleep sack um, and tie it at the bottom. I just love how that looks. I also think it's super practical because it is so nice to have just easy access at the bottom for uh, diaper changes, like especially in the middle of the night when you're sleep deprived. Uh, <laughs> new parents, you guys know what I'm talking about. So this is going to be a really, really fun one. I had a lot of fun with this hack. I hope you guys did too. And make sure and leave me some comments down below because I love to hear from you. I love to interact with you. Uh, and I want to know what you think of this. If there's other baby hacks or other hacks just in general that you want to see, let me know in the comments. I'll also link the tools and everything that I use in the description box so that you guys have that if you um, do see any tools that you maybe aren't familiar with. And we will see you in the next hack video. See ya.